focus, please. I want to do a quick review of function notation. Who remembers what function notation is? Nobody remembers? You will when I start writing this. Instead of writing y is equal to mx plus b, I could write this as f of x is equal to mx plus b. There are other variables that we can use besides f. Sometimes I see this as g or h of x, but this is a shorthand version of an input-output table where we put in for the x what our input is, we put it in to where the x is in this equation, and then we can solve it and find out what our output would be. So for instance, if you have your book open, if you'd like to turn to page 96, we're going to do the try it together. We are being given an input of x is equal to 4. And the first equation we're given is g of x is equal to negative 2x plus minus 3. And the second equation we're going to start or solve is h of x is equal to 7x plus 15. We're going to make our input 4 for both of these. So we're going to rewrite this as g of 4 is equal to negative 2 times 4 minus 3. I'd like you to turn and talk at your table briefly. What did we do with the x's in this equation when we tr changed it to this equation. Talk real quick. Okay, so we just put input that four where we had an X in both places, yes? Mm -hmm. This side is our output and our input at the same time. We're saying we wanna know what the output is when we put in a four. So let's solve this. This would be negative eight minus three is equal to negative 11. So we're saying when our input is 4, our output would be negative 11. Let's try that. I'd like you guys to do the input when we have x is equal to 4 for the second equation. Try just putting in the input. How many of you have an equation that now looks like this when you put in the, the 4? Okay, let's solve it. What's 7 times 4? Plus 15. We end up with 43. But to finish this, we want to put on the left side our, our output. We're saying when we have an input of 4, we have an output of 43. Would that change if I changed our input to negative 1? We would change this to negative 1, this would be negative 1, we'd have a completely different output. This works well, especially when we're testing different equations. A table works great when we're testing the same equation with different inputs. Like if we were going to graph it and we wanted to get more than one xy pair. Okay, I would like you guys um, in your book to look at the bottom of page 96. For example two, it's the second half of that page, and it's writing a linear function rule. And I'm gonna put up here on my paper, you don't need to write this, but I'm gonna make a real quick example of the table that we see for the example. Now, being that this is an advanced class, I would guess a lot of you saw patterns really early when you were in elementary school. Not necessarily all of you, but some of you, that was your pathway into getting into advanced math. You would see a table like this where this is the x's and this is the y's, or in this case, this is the number of bracelets in our word problem and this is our cost.
we could see that if you bought one bracelet, it would be how much? But if you buy two bracelets, it's not 34. Do you see what's happening there? It looks like there's a discount if you buy more, true? Mm -hmm. What about if I buy three? That's not three times 17, is it? So what we're going to do here is we're going to first look and see what's happening between all of these X's. We're adding how many bracelets to it. And then with this, what's the difference between 17 and 32? And between 32 and 47? And here. So this is our constant rate of change. We're getting how much more from the beginning? F plus 15 on each of these. So we're going to write an equation. And I still start with y. It just makes more sense to me. And then I convert it afterwards. If we have y equals mx plus b, in this case, our rule would be they're saying 15x plus b. Yeah, am I off the screen? Thanks for letting me know. And I can change this to f of x. So we're going to change the number of bracelets that go in here. And this plus b is just going to be pairs from the table once we, we create it. We're going to put in here what if our, um, our, what if we can find our value of b here? So I could put in Oh, we're going to find out what our, I'm sorry, we're going to solve what our B is. So we know here that the, the, um, if we put in 17 for our X, what does that correspond to in our table? Here's our X and this is our Y. I could have put two here and 32 here or 4 here and 62 here I'm saying if my input is one of the numbers for the number of bracelets and my output is how much that bracelet costs then I can go and find out what the plus B is so we're gonna solve this here we get 17 is equal to 15 plus B sort of like literal equations we're solving for B this time aren't we mm -hmm. and I'm going to subtract the 15 and we get 2 is equal to B so I want you guys to picture that as a graph I don't know why I'm making it that long we know that the number of bracelets would be down here here's our zero is this graph starting at zero? It's starting up here at two. Right? And I'm probably not going to get to go high enough, but we're starting at two, and then the first other point is going to be way up here at 17, and it's going to grow. I probably should have made this like 5, 10, 15, 20 to make it work. But the graph is starting at two because that is our y-intercept. And I think with the amount of time we have today, we're going to stop there.